We've got a remarkable health story for you this morning, a story of hope for a 12-year-old boy from Somerset who's become the first person in the world to trial a new type of treatment for epilepsy. Yeah, Oren Nolson, who is having multiple seizures a day, has been fitted with a neurostimulator in his skull. Now, previously, they'd only ever been put into a child's chest and then linked to the brain with wire. Our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, has been following Oren's progress over the last few months. It's an amazing story. Uh, his report does contain some images of surgery and of seizures. Would you like to try using a stand? You can, but I don't think it wipes off the spell, does it? Yeah. There's, there's two more. Thank you. Oren is 12 years old. He has me? autism and ADHD. Okay, at my mark. Yeah. But what is holding him back most okay. is his epilepsy. He's not had a day without seizures since he was three. I had a fairly bright and up-together three-year-old that within a few months of seizures commencing deteriorated rapidly and lost a lot of skills. Um, so this is a tonic-clonic. Oren has multiple seizures day and night. All right, OK, all right, all right, OK. Quinn. Some are so severe, he stops breathing. Quinn. Baby, I need your help, please. Quinn. Epilepsy seizures are triggered by abnormal bursts of electrical activity in the brain. These can often be controlled by drugs, but Oren's form of epilepsy, known as Lennox Gasto syndrome, is so severe, nothing has helped. <laughs> Every moment of his life is affected because of his epilepsy. Is it? robbing him of some of his childhood. It's robbed him of all of his childhood so far. I want Oren back. I want the child that, or at least glimmers of the child that I remember. I want some of that back. I want him to find some of himself again. Through the haze of seizures, I'd like to get my boy back. Back, back here. It's October 2023. Oren is being prepared for major surgery at Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. He's the first child in the world to trial this device, a neurostimulator, which will sit in his skull. So we're number one right, we'll start with 190. We'll make the device will send electrical impulses deep into Oren's brain via two electrodes. The leads have to be inserted into the thalamus, a key relay station in the brain for sensory information. Screw ready for the plate in due course. The placing of the leads requires millimetre perfect precision. But this study is hopefully going to allow us to identify really whether this is a, an efficacious treatment for epilepsy and also is looking at a new type of device which is particularly uh, useful in children because the implant is in the skull and not in the chest. And we hope that that will reduce the potential complications. Not easy. After inserting the electrodes, they are carefully connected to the neurostimulator. Then the device is placed into a gap cut out of Oren's skull. Deep under here. And is finally screwed into position. In the coming months, three more patients will undergo the same surgery here at Gosh as part of the first ever trial in the UK of this device to treat severe childhood epilepsy. Final checks complete. Oren's surgery has gone without a hitch. It's pretty spot on to me. It looks very good, so we're super happy. <laughs> That's really great. We now know that we've left him with the leads exactly where we want them to be. Um, so that gives the best chance of the device working and reducing the seizures. Point nine, three milliamps. A month later, Oren and his parents are back at Great Ormond Street for his device to be switched on. We are going to the maximum now. Slowly, the current is increased to the target level. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. It's hoped that constant deep brain stimulation will block the abnormal electrical signals triggering his seizures. Good. Can you reach it? Good man, well done. <laughs> Walk on. Walk on, good man. And this is Oren now. Seven months on, it's immediately clear he's more active and independent. Now age 13, epilepsy no longer dominates his life. 
Seizure-wise, we have seen a massive improvement, severity is less, and yeah, he's a happier boy. We haven't had to resuscitate him since you last saw us. And just overall, we're seeing a much better quality of life, I think, and, and he's happier. Sheep. Yeah, look. Oren's yeah. daytime seizures have reduced by 80%. What was that there? But further improvements are possible yeah. as doctors plan to tailor his device to make it even more responsive to his brain activity. So you're optimistic for the future? Very optimistic for the future. Um, I think the Grailman Street team gave us hope back, which was something we didn't have. And now the future looks brighter. Oren's family know his treatment is not a cure, but they're optimistic he will continue to emerge from the shadow cast by his epilepsy. Fergus Walsh, BBC News, Somerset. Well, I'm really pleased to say that the lead surgeon on Oren's surgery, Martin Tisdall, joins us now. Uh, we saw you there, obviously, in, in Fergus's piece. What's it like to hear Oren's mum saying that you've given them hope back? It's, it's amazing to hear. Um, when we first met Oren, he was having so many seizures, and you can really hear the impact um, when Justine speaks about the fact that really his childhood was being taken away by this. Um, we implanted this device back in October last year, and it's had a really big impact on his life. He's actually not having any of the large seizures anymore, so he's not needing resuscitation. Um, he's not having what we call drop seizures, where he can fall over and injure himself. Um, and as his mum says, he's had an 80% reduction in his daytime seizures, so it's made a really big difference, not only to him, but also to his family. Uh, you've brought in one of the, the devices, uh, which is similar to the one that's been put inside uh, Oren's head. There it is. I mean, it's a, a tiny thing, isn't it? I mean, it looks like it would be in a mobile phone or something like that, like a, a battery, but it's um, that little device is making a huge amount of difference. Can, can, when, when the signals are sent from it into the brain, can Oren feel that? Would he be able to, does he get that stimulation in, 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 in a sensitive way or is it? He doesn't feel anything actually. So when we start the device, we test it, we turn it on and we slowly increase the current. Uh, and one of the things is to make sure that it doesn't cause any side effects. The current's actually really, really small. Um, and what it does is it disrupts the seizures where they start and stops them spreading uh, within the brain. But it's not something that he would be aware of. Right. And the difference between what, the, because this, has, this kind of technology has been used before, but this is different because it's directly in the skull, which for children makes a huge difference. Just explain what has been done before and why this trial is so unique. So this technology, deep brain stimulation, is quite well established for movement disorders, particularly in adults but it's much less established uh, in children and in use for epilepsy. What's different about this new device, which has been designed by uh, engineers at Oxford University and a British biotech company called Amber Therapeutics, is that it sits in the skull, um, and that means there aren't wires running into the chest, so that reduces the complications related to growth. The other thing that's really important about this device is it's rechargeable, so Oren can sit with a headset and charge the battery up, Usually we'd have to replace the batteries every three to five years, and that means going through further surgery, but he won't have to have that. He can just have it recharged as he goes. Now, how often would he have to recharge it like that? We ask him to do it every day, but okay. it takes about half an hour, so he'll sit and watch TV with his headphones on, and that will just keep it topped up. And we should say that the seizures have been reduced, in his case, by something like 80%. And we should also point out, because there were some pictures of Oren having a seizure, which some people might have found quite distressing, but I think his family wanted us to show that, just to show the impact that it has on, on his life. I mean, the seizures that you can see on the film are really horrible. They're the generalised tonic-clonic seizures, and they can be even life-threatening. Oren has lots of different seizures. Those are the most severe ones, and actually this device has managed to stop those very big seizures. He does still have some, some small seizures, um, but we're working to see if we can make the device uh, even more effective in the future. Um, there are different levels of, of epilepsy, different forms of it, different degrees. There'll be people watching this morning who either have epilepsy themselves or, or a loved one or a colleague does. What, what, what's in, in the wider treatment world, are there other things that are also happening which, which offer hope? So we're working all the time to think about what we can do uh, better for people with epilepsy. There are lots of people in the country who have epilepsy that's not well controlled with medication. If we think about children, that's about 25,000 children in the UK. 
And that's why research is really, really important to allow us to find new ways and better ways to treat epilepsy. You've seen some of the impact that epilepsy can have at the most severe end. Um, and it's only by working with families and, and doing this research that we can improve the treatments that are available. So we've seen success with Oran. What's happening with this device now? Is it being fitted into other children? We're very, very happy with the results for Oran, but what we need to do now is to study it in more children to confirm the findings. Uh, we've got another three children who are involved in this study, and then there'll be a further 22 in an additional study. And the idea behind that is to really understand uh, how it works and how we can best use this technology. And then we hope in the future that we'll be able to roll it out to many more children. We've had a fantastic um, response from our viewers this morning who've loved this story and are really encouraged by it, including, I have to tell you, uh, a message from a lady called Jade who said, this is absolutely incredible news, the new surgery technique for epilepsy. Mr Tisdall uh, completely transformed my daughter's life when he completed a hemispherectomy, is that right? Yeah. Uh, on her back in 2019. She went from having more than 20 seizures a day. She's just celebrated five years seizure-free. I can never thank him and the team at Great Ormond Street enough. That's really lovely to hear. Great to hear. And I guess it's another, it's another way, another treatment, which is also making a difference going forward. Yeah, there are lots of different types of epilepsy and um, many children are eligible for surgery, but different types of surgery. Um, fantastic that, that in that case, we were able to actually stop the seizures. Oran's one of the, the group where a single operation is very unlikely to stop everything, but this modern technology gives the best chance of, of giving him back uh, his quality of life. Martin Tistel, thank you so much for coming in thank and explaining you. all of that. And Oren and family, if you're watching this morning, uh, thank you for sharing your story with us. Absolutely.